everybody. Welcome to the second episode of the Golden Goss Podcast. I am your co-host, Samantha. And I'm your other co-host, Faith Berger. And this is our Lockers to Lecture Hall <laughs> episode. Woo-hoo! We are going to course through our journey of sweet, lovely high school and now our college lives, or I should say face college life. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, do you want me to start off? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm down for whatever. All right. Um, so we'll start, like, we'll go year by year. Let's okay. see. Freshman year was not the greatest. Um, this was the year that Harvey hit our Southeast Texas. So school didn't start for, like, two weeks after the date that it was originally supposed to start. So we were already behind from that aspect. And this was very scary on top of other scary things. I was known as the girl whose brother died, basically. That's how everybody knew me. And that was very hard to go into that kind of known type of thing. Uh, yeah, but other than that, I worked through it. I, uh, you know, got found my groove. Uh, the only real thing that sticks out to me my freshman year was... This senior who befriended me, and I had, like, trust in him as a friend, and then he just took it upon himself to slowly turn that friendship into, like, sexual assault, and it was like he would touch my body I would say no, but, like, this is, like, a Travis Kelsey-sized man. And anybody knew me freshman year, I was tiny. I, like, I couldn't physically stop him. And I know what everybody's thinking. Like, I should have told somebody, and I should have. But it's just, like, that fear of what happens after you tell somebody. And it's, like, is anybody going to believe me? You know, like, what is going to happen to the girl who got or, like, reported that she was sexually assaulted by, like, one of the star football players? Like, what, how? Yeah, and I just think, like, a lot of victims um, of that kind of stuff, especially in high school when you're getting victimized by somebody who's very, especially in a small town, who's very well-known, and they would have blamed you, like, oh, you did this to our star quarterback or whatever you know like I don't know and I think just in general victims don't like to say a lot about it so I think you know and you were you were a little girl like you didn't you had no idea you know what I mean yeah and then it was it's on top of okay if I tell somebody I'm also going to be the girl who got assaulted in computer class on top of the girl whose brother passed away like two years prior like there were just so many things and I also felt that I was just kind of numb from two years. Like, I, my middle school years ha- are, like, non-existent because that time I was just numb. I closed off, like, anything. Like, those years are nothing in my brain. And I think I was – freshman year I was actually starting to heal and, like, grow from the trauma, but right. not completely – And then this happened, so it was kind of just, like, more anesthesia on my situations, on my life. It was just kind of brutal. Um, But, I mean, looking back on it now, like, I should have said something. I should have, like, reported it. And, like, if you're listening to this and, like, you're a victim of sexual assault or anything along those matters, like, we hear you. We believe you. We support you. Yeah, we stand with you, and it's not your fault, and it's not okay that people in society, like, think that they can do this, and it's just, that was a topic that, like, one, I wanted to touch on because of my, ex- my freshman year, that was, like, a big thing, and I carried that through high school, and it was kind of just, like, a linger, dark cloud up until probably my junior year. Yeah. And I don't, like, this is the first time I'm ever talking about it. I don't even think Julie knows. 
and Julie is literally like she was my per- she's been my person since like fifth grade like that's my girl that's um, interesting. yeah and it was just mm-hmm. it just you know whatever but other than that like I played volleyball I was in athletics I was pretty fit I was good and then <laughs> I <laughs> work work uh I started uh, birth control for my acne because I had really bad cystic buildup acne. Um, so I got on that, and it helped. Sophomore year, like, I had clear skin, clear everything. Um, and sophomore – we'll just – I'll then just jump into sophomore year. Sophomore year, um, it was good. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, I would say. Um, I turned into a bit of a stoner. <laughs> Sorry, mom, if you're listening. Um, but it was, bad. it wasn't a good crowd. Looking back, I wouldn't have done it because I just, I don't know why I did it. It, I think maybe like fit in. And then I also held on to the fact that like the first time I ever did it, I was, it was me and Cameron. So I had that kind of like yeah, going. Yeah, like holding on to it. Yeah. But other than that, that shit made me forget things. My acne got <laughs> worse. It's not really not. Yo, oh. oh, yeah, it made my acne worse. That's why I quit. I didn't know that. Um, but then sophomore year is also the year I met Faith. Ah, yay! <laughs> he's knocked over the he's knocked over the fan. Oh my god, that's so funny. Uh, but yeah, I met Faith in line. For a carnival ride at the Rice Festival, I think I like tw- was it tw- okay? I don't. I'm not gonna say years because I don't remember that shit. Um, yeah, I, don't remember I met her because my friend Julie, who was dating this boy, they were trying to set me up with his friend, and Faith was in line, and she was like, "Hey," and I was hey, like, "Hey, girl." girl. Hey. <laughs> um, but after that, you know, we kind of stayed in contact, and I was in that relationship, and it was really toxic. It just, everybody has their relation, like, at least one relationship in high school that is just there because it's, like, happened, and it doesn't mean anything, and that's mine. Like, that was a bad relationship. It was a bad person. There was one incident where I actually thought that my sophomore boyfriend was going to hit me, um, because I accidentally hit him with, like, a whip, and he shoved me up against the wall at our friend's house and, like, got in my face, and after that is when, like, I distanced myself, and the relationship, like, just ended. There was just nothing anymore. I didn't want to deal with it, and this is also the year that my self-confidence dropped because me and Faith were at our friend's house. (laughs) We were at our friend's house, and the ex-boyfriend was there, and we got into a predicament, and I basically told him that he can go fuck himself because he's a piece of shit. And he decided to call me a whale. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And after this, my self-confidence just, like, took a toll because I was distraught. Like, nobody in years ever said anything well, to me about, like, well, and also, like, we were just, we were sending pictures back and forth earlier, and you sent me a picture of us, like, I, I had taken selfies with you, like, in the yeah. pool. You were Memory. not fat at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was just thinking about that earlier. I'm like, he the had thing, the fat fucking nerve. Ass. Yeah, like, he had the nerve, bitch. Like, what? And he, you know, Disgusting. he wasn't... He wasn't in good health either. Uh, people are just crazy. But, just don't be saying mean shit like that. Yeah, fucking bitch. Especially to a hot girl. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I think it was just like, I thought I was hot shit. Like, honestly, who doesn't think they're hot shit? Right? Right. Well, sure. <laughs> when he said sure. this, after my years of always, like, nobody ever telling me anything about my appearance or anything like that, and just, like, getting stabbed in the back by somebody who supposedly, like, was supposed to love me. And it just, like, killed my self-confidence. I thought that, like, his words meant something. And, like, it just, like, after that, if you followed my Finsta, like, the post just kind of stopped. Because, like, I was trying to, like, 
find myself and find my confidence. And then um, slowly that year, I started working at Market Basket. I was doing my own thing, and it slowly started to come back, but I feel like it didn't fully, like, I didn't embody self-confidence again until, like, my junior year. And my junior year is the year I met Bradley, but that was, like, later. That was, like, December, like, November time. December time is when we really started to talk. But this year, like, I was the hot commodity. Like, I thought I was the hottest bitch on the planet. Like, I still Word. had my assets. As you said, I had as you said. long ass hair. Like, I got my yeah. eyebrows dyed. I had eyelash extensions. Like, I was just that bitch. And I honestly, for, I was... honestly, like, in this period of time, I do remember when you got your eyebrows done, when you got your eyelashes done, and you were, like, very just. You could tell that you had more light and you were more comfortable and you could you were feeling yourself essentially. I like was I could confident. tell. Confident. Yeah, I could tell. It was a beautiful oh, yeah. look. You know, like when people are they're really confident and that kind of like radiates and transcends like or like how or, they carry themselves. Yeah, and it kind of bleeds through. Like if you believe yeah. that you're beautiful, like everybody else will believe it too because you walk like you know it, you know? But oh yeah, and they I did. That. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, God. Oh, God. But, I mean, I I was that bitch, and I will forever be that bitch. But junior year, like, I, my self-confidence skyrocketed. Like, I was, I was it. I was the it girl. But <laughs> this is also the year that we had Hurricane Imelda. So that was, that was, like, before the year. So I don't think it altered, like, when the year started. I think it still started, like, the same time. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't – it was worse than Harvey, but it seemed like it didn't take as much time because it was, like, our second flood that we've ever gotten. It didn't take mm -hmm. that much time to, like, recuperate ourselves and get back to, like, our normal. Right. Uh, but, I mean, other than that, like – that was the year that I feel like I had, like, the greatest friendships. I was in a dual credit class, and we would, like, have study groups. And that was, like, those were, like, core memories because those kids were, fuck like, we were hilarious. We were, like, a tight-knit. It was probably, like, 20-something of us. So if you are my cool kid dual credit class for history in the mornings on <laughs> <laughs> those days and if you're listening to this like I remember those days and we were we were getting it but it was just it I was I was so confident in myself that I just floated and I just did what I wanted I talked to whoever I wanted like I just had like so many people surrounding me but like like you said like if you feel so good about yourself at radio so maybe that's why I like had so many people like, in my corner, because I was just, like, the most positive, beautiful, like, time that I've ever been alive, like, that was probably when it was me, like, embodied everything me, and I guess people just, like, clung on to that, because I was just so happy all the time. Yeah, and a, a then, confident woman, like, attracts people, and especially a self-confident person. Like, if you're confident in yourself, like, you will, you will attract so many... Like, I mean, friendships, relationships, like, whatever. You attract. You attract people yeah. to you. Like, a moth to a flame is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, I don't know. That that's like, like, the Taylor Swift song. <laughs> I don't even know that song. I'll send it to you later. Uh, and Bradley had the nerve to call me a Swifty. And I'm like, no. It's me. You see the red lip in honor of Taylor Swift. Love her. Yeah. Ah! Love her, but, like, I'm not a Swifty. I get offended when people call me that. <laughs> Oh, goodness. But let's see. Where, oh, I was hot shit. Okay. And so since I was hot shit, I decided to take the leap on this boy that I've had a crush on since middle school, um, also known as my now fiance. So I'm oh, here Bradley. to tell you that if you, yeah, if you manifest it, it happens. Because sophomore year, we were in a history class, and our teacher always changes the seats and he it would always end up putting me and Bradley, like, right next to each other. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day, Brandy Broussard, Brandy, if you're listening to this, um, she was like, 
uh, Samantha, like, he is hardcore flirting with you. I was like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Bradley doesn't even notice me. She's like, no, Samantha, like, he is flirting with you. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? But sophomore year, you know, I was, I just got out of that really bad relationship with that shitty motherfucker. And I was just trying to, like, find myself again because, like, he, it was, it killed me. So I'm like, I don't have time for that right now. Like, I need to do me. And so I did. And then junior year, I was hot shit, and I went after whatever I wanted, and I went after Bradley. And Work. <laughs> I made the first move, and I was like, hey, you know, whatever. And he ended up asking me on a date to Macho's, and I know we touched on this a little bit in the first episode, but, like, that, it was like, you, it was like a euphoric feeling almost like it was just amazing and after like I remember Julie was at my house like while I was on the date and when I got back like I told her I was like oh my god Julie like it went amazing like if I do not marry this man I am never dating again yeah fast yeah. flash forward two years later I'm marrying this man next year so manifest mm-hmm. it baby <laughs> But it was just, like, after that, we were inseparable. I mean, he would stay at my house till like, 4 in the morning, even on school. Crazy, night, just, crazy. Just watching TV. And, I mean, like, I don't know where we had the fucking energy because we go to bed at 9 o'clock now. But it was just, like, in we were inseparable. Everybody knew, like, we were, like, a, we were the it. I'm not going to say the it couple, but, like, we were the it couple. You know, like... Yeah. I just feel like every everybody knew that I had liked him for so long, and it was, like, finally happening. Yeah. Emma Tolley, she was a girl that I went to school with. She is, like, she's our number one supporter. Like, she's the one who pushed me to go on the date with him. And I was just like, uh, what if it's, like, a not even, like, a date date? She's like, Samantha, we're in high school. Nobody goes on just friend dates anymore. Like, this is a date date. Like, he's yeah. asking you out. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like, okay. <laughs> and so, I mean, slow, like, before that, I was kind of, like, imprinting on him. Every morning, I would yell, like, when he was walking, you know, like, student parking lot, everybody parked next to each other. Mm-hmm. Well, he would always park in the back, like, in the grass. Mm-hmm. And I would park in the back row. And he had, like, this big yee truck. And every time he would get out, I'd be like, hey, Bradley, good morning. Like, I like your whatever. Like, you know, like, because I was just, I felt so good about myself that I could get him if I wanted to. Yeah. And so I was just, like, slowly kind of, like, putting me into his life a little bit, you know, just, like, little comments here and there. Make him think about me through the day. And I guess it worked because, I mean, I love him so much and I have always loved him so much Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that like I took that chance yeah and I'm just so glad I took that chance because if I was swear to god if I probably wasn't like that confident that year who knows if it would have happened you know it could have happened later but like I put it into motion just because of how I felt about myself and Mm -hmm. I will live by I was like, the baddest bitch junior year, and nobody can tell me different. I forgot to talk about the brownies. Fucking shit. Ah. Tell that story. Tell that story. Just tell it. Who cares? Okay. podcast. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. So, if you went to school with me, you already know the story. But for face friends and people who don't know the story, I am a baker. I bake the best brownies ever, and anybody who's tasted them can a state to that but I realized how good my brownies were and I decided to sell them (laughs) Mm -hmm. so I would sell them at school and I mean everybody would buy them even teachers and I mean I would make like 200 to 300 dollars bro like a week because I would do this weekly and I think I was in, like, my fourth week of selling them. I had brought, like, this big-ass duffel bag because my, you know, like, I had got so popular with the brownie business, Mm -hmm. I had to bring enough to accommodate my consumers, you know? (laughs) So I had my Victoria's Secret duffel bag, and 
I remember that I was sitting at lunch and I had just saw like Principal Rich, Vice Principal Richards just like walking over to me and I was like, fuck. I mean, because I knew this was coming. You can't sell stuff at school. Oh. But I played, I played dumb. So he comes up to me. He's like, I need you to come to my office. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. Um, so I get to go, and I'm like, hey, Thina, will you put my stuff in my, like, locker? He's like, no, I need you to bring your items. I was like, all right. Okay. <laughs> so I we go know. to the office, and he sits me down, and he's, like, opening my bags, like, literally opening my bags. And he's like, what is this? I'm like, brownies. He's like, are you selling them? I was like, no. He's like, well, then where did this money come from? I'm like, donations. <laughs> <laughs> and as this is happening, I'm texting mom because they didn't even tell mom that they brought me to the office or anything. Oh, well, lo weird. and behold, they called the cops on me because he said the cops are on their way here now and we're going to investigate Yikes. your brownies. Because um, we have been we have been told that you were selling brownies that like have marijuana in them. Basically, like saying pot, I'm selling pot brownies, and I'm yeah, looking at him. I was like, yeah. I said, you really think I'm stupid enough to sell pot brownies on school property? Like, Do you want to smell the them? Do you want to eat one? And so <laughs> I sold him. <Yeah. laughs> the receptionist comes in, and mm-hmm. she goes. I will remember this till the day I die because it was just so iconic of Pebbles. She goes, her mother is on line one. And he said, I can't talk to her. And she said, no, you want to talk to her. When I tell you, as soon as he picked up the phone, I could hear her screaming at him. Like he had the phone all the way out here and you could hear her (laughs) clear her fucking day, bro. And she was just like, how are you having my daughter like be investigated by the cops and you can't even give me the motherfucking courtesy to tell me you brought her to the fucking office like screaming at him she's like you're you pulled her out of her class for this fucking bullshit she said if she's selling pop brownies then all your fucking teachers are high because they all fucking bought one and i Uh looked at him i was like they did they bought some even because when he was like, you're not allowed to sell stuff on school property, I was like, well, I didn't know that because your teachers bought some. So if I'm not allowed to do that, how are they, like, why are they purchasing them from me? You know, like, plain dumb. And then he's like, yes, ma'am, but, like, we have to do this because we got information that there's pot in them and you can't have drugs on campus. And he goes, so I'm going to confiscate your brownies and I'm going to confiscate your money and at the end of the school day, if there's if there's no pot in them, you can have them back. I was like, oh, okay, okay, but I'm going to count my money in front of you. So we both know exactly how much I have. So Good I pull out you, my bitch. wad. Good on you. Good on you. I pull out my wad of like, it was like all singles. You know, high school kids, they don't have that. They, it's all singles. My fucking yeah. wad of like $400. And we sit there for a good like. 10, 15 minutes, me just counting this shit out. And I put a sticky note on top of it of how much I had. At the end of the day, <clears throat> he calls me back in there. And he goes, you can have your stuff back. They didn't Work. find anything. I said, yeah, B, and I told you they didn't find anything. You should have just trusted me and you wouldn't have had to have the cops out here. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you're not allowed to sell brownies on campus anymore. I said, Okay. I walk out to the school parking lot. Who wants some brownies? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Work. And sold the rest. But after that, I didn't bring any to school. But senior year, we really didn't go because of COVID. You could have went, but you had to wear a mask everywhere. It was like, you know, you That's had stupid. to separate. It, yeah, it just wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been good. And so me and Brad decided not to go. And we also decided that we were going to build a house this year. So he got a job. I did school for both of us. And we just did our own thing. And we saw, we probably saw our whole class like twice throughout senior year. You got once robbed. Being, yeah, once being, um, what was it? Oh, senior slideshow. And then graduation. 
And then, like, so, like, we had graduation rehearsal, graduation, and then, um, what's it called after graduation? Little thing you do, the... Oh, project graduation? Oh, yeah, project, project graduation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went to, um, some, like, little main event in, like, Houston or something. Awesome. But it was just so sad because, like, it just ruined... I mean, we got prom. So I went to prom my sophomore year, my junior year, and my senior year. Sophomore year, I was with my ex-best friend and her boyfriend and then some guy who was, like, obsessed with me. And <laughs> junior year... Oh, no, did we not go junior year? No, we didn't. We didn't have a prom junior year. Why not? Yeah, because the seniors didn't have a prom because of COVID. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Because it hit. So <laughs> did COVID hit like. Like March. March of your junior year. June, my junior year, yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we didn't have prom. And mm. honestly, I feel like those last months of junior year, we really didn't do shit because like online school was like new to everybody. So it was kind mm-hmm. of just like little shit here and there, whatever. And then senior year, the whole, whole year was COVID. And we had our prom and we had like a regular graduation, but it was just like not sentimental to me. Like if anybody Uh, knows uh, me, like I cry about everything, everything mm -hmm. I fucking ball my eyes out for. I didn't even Mm -hmm. shed a tear at graduation. Like that's just how much covid ruined everything for me and it's just it's just so hard to like look back on what if covid didn't happen like how would how would have it been and the only thing i regret is when we went to project graduation i fucking passed the fuck out like (laughs) i slept (laughs) like the whole time i think like the first like three hours I was awake and then the rest I was knocked the fuck out Bradley having time of his life playing pool with everybody me I'm asleep on the couch right behind him like I have the blanket over my head and I we woke up and we got on the bus we parted ways and after that it was just like oh okay that was senior year yeah it's really sad that you guys missed out on all that stuff because I mean, there's, like, sports, you know, like, and you say goodbye for that, and you get to just have senior year. I mean, you do the yeah. walkthrough. You know, it's very emotional. It's a buildup. We like did we do a about, walkthrough. You know. Oh, you did? Okay. But yeah. still, it's not, but it's not it the was... same thing as if, you know, you've been there the whole school year. Like, it's not the same. It's not as impactful. And, <laughs> yeah, and then the walkthrough, Sorry. it wasn't even in, like, the buildings that we went to school in because, one, the elementary – is like it was a new elementary, so that was oh, okay. in the halls that we walked. And then middle school and intermediate, since the flooding, they were like still renovating, so it was like cubicles. So we we walked through cubicles. We didn't even walk through like the halls that we went to school in. So that was like another thing so that sad. I wish like was more sentimental. But it was just like the, these are the cards that we were dealt. So like I just have to suck it up. I know. Deal. Okay. For me. Well, I'm done. I'm done with high school, so you can you can go. You're laughing so hard you're crying. Um, I had fun fact. I had to call Bub, and um, I was like, Bub, I can't remember anything from my high school career. I need you to help me. Like, help me remember. So <laughs> it's very sporadic. But um, yeah. Mine okay. was very sporadic too. Yeah, it's like okay. I just have I just have <laughs> random things. Okay, so freshman year. I played sports and stuff like that. Like, I've played sports for forever. I think, I think, uh, I started playing, like, volleyball and basketball in middle school. But I played softball since I was, like, a kid. So, I was playing all the sports in, uh, freshman year. We sucked. We were horrible. It was horrible. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much for sports. And then, um... I had my braces at that time. Okay, I had my braces. Oh, fucking I braces. Think, yeah, I think I got them freshman year. I think I got them freshman year, and then I wore them until sophomore year, and then sophomore year, I think I I think I think was done with them. But yeah, maybe it was... sophomore year, I got mine off, too. Yeah, I think so. I think I had to have, like, two and a half years or whatever. And then um, Mom and Todd got married my freshman year. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought they'd been married for, like, forever. 
No, that I remember being like a little bit older because it was okay. Maybe that's a lie. I had my braces, but I think I got them off that year too because <laughs> they got married and I didn't have my braces on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, my mom and my step the stepdad got married, but he was in our lives for a while before they got married, though. <clears throat> He stopped smoking cigarettes for her. Oh, and then I think the summer after, I feel like it was that, after freshman year, that summer, I think that's the one where I was running a mile every day. Because I was chunky. Yeah. I, I think, think that's, that's right. what you were telling me. I think it was either freshman or sophomore year. Yeah, one of the which two. Which is, I am so sorry that you thought you had to do that. Oh, it that's wasn't just, for I feel like that's a lot. Oh, yeah, but it was fine. Like, I, I enjoyed it. I actually got my mile down to, like, seven minutes, like, six and a half minutes or something. Psycho bitch. I'm yeah. just going to say that. Psycho yeah. bitch. Yeah, I was trying a nice mile, and then they made me run it That's for track, okay. and I hated it. So. Yeah, and track. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. I, I, the only reason why I liked it was because I could run it by myself and listen to my music and run with my dog. So that was why I liked it. Okay, moving on. Tom Warrior. <laughs> So this year, okay, this is when I had self-induced scoliosis. So my backpack, yeah, okay. So my backpack was so oh, heavy. Yeah. yeah, so my backpack was so heavy. I had it on one shoulder, right? I had it on, like, my right shoulder all the time. Well, then, like, we were, I think it was, like, towards the end of the year is when I had it. And I was, like, going up to spike a volleyball in my back. Like, I shooting pain in my back, like, at the bottom right of my back and I was like oh my god there's something wrong with me like my back is broken I don't know so we went to uh the doctor or whatever and they were like yeah you have self-induced scoliosis my back was like a c and then my neck is supposed to be at an angle like like a 45 degree angle but mine was like straight up like that yeah all because my backpack was too heavy so now I will never wear my backpack I will only ever wear my backpack on both shoulders I will not wear it on one shoulder it was always I was always a two strap nerd. Okay, I will say that. I was always two strapping it. Yeah. Um, this is when I was driving. Um, do you remember? I, I don't think you remember, but I was driving the Hoopty, the old Suburban. You remember that? Yeah, you the weren't only vehicle around. I've ever. Yeah, it was the red uh, Toyota. This one okay. I know. The one I know. Okay, so I must have gotten it. You, I must have had it when we met. Cause I got that. I got my. Yeah. I got my car. Uh, junior year. Okay, this was also the year, bitch. Oh my god. Okay, so I was playing sports throughout this whole thing, but there was a lot that happened in this year, like for my body wise. So I, okay, I got really sick, and this was like around UIL, and I was really sick, really dehydrated, and so it was like uh, one day of school that I was trying to go to school, whatever. So I went to the bathroom, and. Uh, I fainted in the bathroom, and I didn't realize that I had fainted. Yeah, you don't know this story? Okay. Anyway, uh -huh. I'll have to show you pictures of my busted-ass face. It's, it's bad. So, um, yeah, I'm going to want to see that. Yeah, so in the bathroom, I fell. And then I was like, okay, this is weird. Because I thought, like, I didn't realize that I had fallen, like I fainted. Because everything was black. But it was like, I thought that maybe I'd turn the light off or something. So I'm like, okay, whatever. A lot of light off. So then I go, we're, you've been to my mom's house in High Island though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's all hardwood floor. Like, not even hardwood. Like, it's un unfinished wood flooring. And so I fucking walk in there. And I remember everything went black. And I felt my body fa falling forward. And so... God damn, what yeah. the fuck is wrong with you? It hurt so bad. I woke up, I woke up, and I immediately started feeling for my teeth. Because I landed face first on that fucking floor. Me. I'd yeah. be like, are my teeth still there? I know, I was like, are my teeth still there? Are my teeth still there? <laughs> like, nobody was home except you know, for Todd. What? That is so funny, because when I had my accident, like, probably like a year or something ago at the house, I... I told everybody I slipped and fell on the coffee table. Real story, I was trying to take a picture of the coffee table from, like, above. So I stood on the couch, and I stood on, like, the edge of the coffee table. And we had, like, that, uh, like, the driftwood coffee table. So it was, like, you know, like, the slice of wood that you epoxy and everything. Well, when I stepped on the fucking coffee table, 
it went like sideways. I fell. Here's like this. The coffee table was on its side. I fell, hit my head right oh, here on bitch. the edge of it. Like I called mom freaking the fuck out. I don't know if I passed out, but I feel like maybe for like a second. Cause I mean, it was, I was on the couch. <laughs> Why don't like this? As soon as I like got up, I went like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Those teeth, I made sure my teeth were okay. I didn't care about anything else. And then I went to the mirror, made sure like my whole face was okay, and then I called mom and was like, I need you to call the ambulance because like I think I just oh, fucked up my, my head. head. Yeah. So Dude, like having braces like that and then falling on your face, like I'm I was like terrified. That is like my biggest fear. We didn't spend oh, all that to- money to fuck them up. <laughs> I didn't spend two and a half years wearing braces, bitch, just for me to lose a tooth. Crazy. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. I bit a hole through my lip. I had uh, a big, nasty cut. I had a big bruise on my head. I'll show you pictures of it. It was gnarly. It was crazy. Same year. Same year. I sprained my pinky finger on (laughs) November 30th. I have a picture of my pinky finger. It was my left one. I don't know. I think I, I think it was basketball season and I think, um, I got past the ball or something and it like, you know, you can jam your finger, like whatever. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you get our friend, fingers jammed all the time, but this like, yeah, I I actually fucking spraying all the time. Shit. yeah. Cause it was starting to turn purple and I was like, uh, coach, my finger is purple. And he's like, yeah, you probably sprained it. So we taped the two, my yes, two yes. fingers. Yeah, and then I started playing again. So yeah, sprained my, sprained my finger on November 30th. And then turned around on December 5th and sprained my my ankle. Sprained my left ankle. Yeah, it was not cool. I was like, okay, I was like, it's so stupid. Because we were playing basketball. Okay, playing basketball, typical. And I stepped, like I stepped and went too far. And my ankle went, and then I fell over. Yeah, it was bad. It was Didn't it was nobody's still. fault but my own. Yeah, it was stupid. Um, and that's the year that uh, Bub came to school. And then also, like, I met Tori Foreman, I think. I'm pretty sure. Like, when we started hanging out and stuff like that. Okay, moving on. We're on junior year now. I think... That's when you met me. Mm-hmm. I think I was also dating... I had been dating... Um, That one guy that lived across the street from me, my childhood bestie. Devin? No, Derek. Derek. I don't know where I got Devin from. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I thought it was. I knew it started I knew it started with a D. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They also went to track state for track that year, I think. Sophomore year. They went to state. Yeah. In the uh I think they did for like the sprint relay. They went to track and then I think um my coach's son, Nate, he went to state for, for something. I can't remember what it was. But, yeah, they did really good. So, that's the year that I went to prom with Bub because the whole Tarek and uh, Tori and Derek thing happened oh. at the beach. Yeah. Um, that happened. I was supposed to go with Derek, and then I was like, nah, fuck that. So, I went with Bub. And then, um, I don't think that that's right. We went to the, aunt, what? something Mm -hmm. about I think my sophomore year because it was after me and motherfucker got out of the relationship Mm -hmm. and I went to prom with his best friend Dalton but before that I was like people were asking me to prom I don't remember exactly but like there was a couple guys asking me to prom and he got so mad bro (laughs) oh god because people were asking me to go to prom because I was supposed to go with him and then I broke that off so then other people were like oh if you want to go to prom then you can go with me and he got so fucking mad and then when he learned that we that me and Dalton were going to prom together like as friends he was like both fucking lit like he was so mad and I just thought it was the funniest shit ever we all weren't so I just dating. wanted to add that in there no we're no, uh-uh. he was just being crazy no yeah he was being jealous because I was a hot commodity <laughs> I think I had only been asked to prom, like, one or two times. Whatever. They all thought that I was mean. Because, apparently, I don't remember when Austin called me a hog, but uh, I don't know what year that was. Yeah, it had to have been. And I was very offended because I thought that he was calling me fat. And he (laughs) said, no, Faith, you're mean like a hog. And I was like, okay, 
I'll take that. Makes I'll sense. take that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I was a mean bitch. I was mean as fuck. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, Servant bitch. Mm-hmm. And I think also like junior year too was was when we were we were going to a lot of Milo's um, Pony League games in Winnie and stuff. Like me, yeah. Sniff, and Brittany, we were all going like a lot to his like Pony yeah. League games. And then that's the year also that we went to uh, an A and M's A and M basketball game. Their women's basketball oh. team was playing. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was cool. cool. Okay, senior year. Is that the year? Oh, is was junior year or senior year the year that the whole Britney thing went down? We couldn't figure it out. Me and Bub could not time it. But I'm thinking that it had to be junior year, or like I or feel like, like first it, of a senior. No, I. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe it was like the first of senior year, because February junior year, y'all were still friends. Like, February of your junior year, y'all were still friends, because that was my sophomore year birthday dinner oh, when, that when everybody we, came oh, to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, when we got high and then. went to Pebbles House. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm terrible. It, it, was I in my maroon dress? Maroon dress? Yes, and I was in that, like, stripy dress. No, I wasn't it was... high, though. I didn't smoke until after I graduated oh. high school. Yeah, I wasn't high. Oh. Oh, maybe you're just in the car. Yeah, because yeah. we all rode back home together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't I start that until <laughs> after I graduated. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so senior year, I got homecoming queen, and I got prom queen. Uh, oh, bad bitch. Okay, just throw that in there nonchalantly. I went to a one A school. I had nine matter. people in my class. Still... So those nine people couldn't have liked you, but they did. Well, isn't it like all high school votes for you? No, I don't know. For prom, it is. I mean, not for prom for Hoko. I don't all, know. I, I think ours I was just by. I think ours was just by, like, year, so, like, sophomores could only vote for sophomores. Oh, well, we were so small, I think, that we had to, we all had to vote. Whatever. Probably so. Yeah, I mean, I was, <laughs> I was happy. I was, like, the only one that I want is homecoming queen. Like, I don't really care about prom, but I got Hoko anyway. I was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah! This was when I started birth control. I believe because this Senior was when, year? yes, because this was when I blew up in weight. My acne was really bad. Like I have pictures and girl, I don't even look the same. I, <laughs> it was bad. I'm pretty sure that's when I started it. Um, it's horrible. I hated it. Anyway. Oh, we went to the third round in playoffs for volleyball and we ended up losing to this school that, was a two A school, right? And then they went moved down to a one A, and they whooped our asses. But they ended up being the state champs of the year. Rude. I hated it. See, so, yeah, and then I I put down here. Britt cut me off. So yeah, Brittany definitely cut me off my senior year for some stupid idiotic fucking reason. Because Faith is literally not a threat to anybody. I mean, she's a threat because she's a fucking bombshell if you've ever seen one. <laughs> but, like, even even me, when I was dating him, I wasn't, like, I never thought, oh, Faith is going to steal my man. Because... No. But maybe it's... Like why? I don't know. Like, no. I just never thought that. I mean, like, you... It's not because you weren't hot. It's not because you weren't funny. Like, you were a total... You're, you're still a total package. But it's just, like, I never thought that. But it's also because maybe I was just so confident. Like, I really didn't have any insecurities or anything. So maybe, like, that's on her. But, like, personally, me, I just met you. Like, we weren't even friends for four or five months. Yeah, but you didn't I really never know me. once, the thought never crossed my mind of, oh, Faith is, like, a threat to me or my relationship. Like, she's going to steal my man. Even now, I'm like, we can't go steal my man you know like yeah, it's just never. if you're secure in your friendship like and you trust them you should never think that and clearly period, that's period. Just, that was on her and it's her loss and that's all i'm gonna say about it because i have some hard words no i think it's just <laughs> like it's so childish because it was over like chapstick 
And I had, like, asked to use her boyfriend's traffic, which, which, by the way, the guy that Samantha dated and me, we set Brittany and her boyfriend up. Me and him set them up. So I'm like, why the fuck would I sabotage your relationship? And also, I don't want him. I would have told you. I wouldn't have gone after him. Like, hello. And she's known me even longer than you have. She's known me since I That's was- That's what I'm saying. Yeah, since like eighth, ninth, eighth seventh grade. Like, it just stupid. When it, when it came out, the whole thing, because like I was both of y'all's friends, so I was getting both sides. Uh-huh. And then eventually I picked saying? a side. I want to know. The because of the chapstick, <laughs> and like she thought you like is? she thought you wanted her man. I don't like that's basically what I was. I don't remember like the whole like full exactly. But the what chapstick, she said. the chapstick was the end straw. Like that was the straw that just. And it's just like okay, well clearly you're not secure in your relationship. You're not secure within yourself, and like you're taking it out on faith. Which is crazy to me because she's been your best friend for years. But slowly I started to see that, like, the point of view from her was shit. And I was like... There's no what? evidence. Uh, There's nothing. Like, like Faith, Faith would literally never... So I was like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. done with you. And I then have never... me and Faith were besties. Well, it used to get on my nerves because, like... It was a lot of... Whenever I was in high school and even, like, in college, like, some of the girls that I met, like... They would go after my exes. They would go, you know, and I'm just not that girl. I get really upset about that kind of stuff. Like there are, yeah, there are 8 billion people in this world that you can go find somebody else. Like it's not that hard. And if you need somebody, then that's shitty. So I, and yeah, I would never betray my friends. I care about my friends so much. Like there would be no way. That's what I'm saying. And even if I did, even, okay, say if I did somehow, somehow. (laughs) <laughs> connect with an ex of like one of my friends i'd be like yo listen let's talk real shit right now if you tell me not to at all talk to this person i will not i will respect you and i would rather have our friendship than something that's probably not even gonna work out hello and that shows <laughs> a lot about you and your character well yeah but it's also just like rule number one don't fuck with your friend's exes like hello You know what I mean? But, like, girls in high school, they didn't give a fuck. They didn't care. Mm, They don't care. Girls are mean. Yeah. I wasn't a bully. I mean, I hope I wasn't a bully. I don't think I was a bully. I was mean. I may have been a bully. I was mean as fuck. I will say I was mean. But I was never um, vicious or, like, a bully. I would get mad at people that that would hurt me if they were my friends. But also that would pick on other people. I would get on them. Even if I didn't really like Solid, the person, yeah. yeah, even if I didn't like the person that they were bullying, I would always be like, you need to shut your fucking mouth. Like, shut the fuck up. That makes sense. Yeah. Because when Blake said that shit about me being a whale, you jumped on his ass. Oh, like that. Like that. <laughs> and those boys in high school, too, they like to run their mouths. And I always like, I was on it, bitch. I was on it. I was like, no, we're not doing this today. No. Fuck Faith no. is the friend everybody needs. Just well, show that out like, there. Now it's not, but if I'm comfortable with these people, like, and I know who they are, and you're going to sit here and judge, well, even just bullying in general, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Why? Nobody fucking be cares nice. about you. It, yeah. It takes no effort to be nice. It takes so much effort to be a cunt. Like, <laughs> why? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's some facts. Okay. You want to talk about your college experience or what? Oh, yeah, we can dive into college. I didn't know you were done talking about senior year. I did Sorry. have a question, though. Sorry. Yeah, um, go ahead. Oh, and I was you're, about like, how? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Also, do you want to touch on the top, like, on how it was kind of being, like, a role model in such a small oh, yeah. class for, like, your younger, you. like, athletes and stuff? Thank you for reminding me about that. Hold up, let me eat this ice <laughs> <laughs> are you not- yeah, cover your mic because that's just gonna make me go crazy. Sorry, is it loud? I'm so sorry. ASMR, me eating ice. Oh, um, like crunch, crunch, crunch. No, I'm so glad you said that because okay, I with these girls, okay, these girls, right? At some point, it's like they teach you, and then you end up teaching them, whatever. And so, in high school, it was always like, okay, we have freshmen coming in, but like, really. Whoever was the starting group, whoever um, played, like, if you were a starter, you're going to play the whole fucking game. Like, there was no 
we didn't switch out. We didn't do that. Like we did sometimes if somebody was catching an attitude yeah. or if somebody was hurt, you know, <laughs> but, um, in practice we would be like, I don't know. It was very, like, I was teaching myself how to do a lot of the things like for volleyball, but having that camaraderie of like showing girls how to do it, like being in the locker room every single day, going on the buses together all the time, like going to every game together. It was really hard for me to let that go because that was another like family, a family of mine. Yeah. Because if you played one sport, you play in all sports at High Island. Like the te- the teams yeah. don't fucking change, bitch. Like no, <laughs> it don't change. Like you're playing the if sports you, and you're if in you it. You suck. You're still playing. Yeah, yeah. Like I played sports because I wanted them to play volleyball for me. Like some girls didn't like volleyball, but they played it for me because I loved it. And then I would go and play basketball, even though I didn't like it. I would go play for those girls that wanted a team. You know what I mean? Because if you yeah. take me out, if you take girls that don't want to play it, there's not a sport. So it was like we – Exactly. Yeah, so we had to, like, congregate and be like, yo, you got to play this. And we'd be like, yo, yeah, you got to play that too because we got to have a team. So – So y'all were, like, there for each other almost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like a whole family. And then, like, whenever I I was, like, leaving – I mean, I have a whole jersey. Like, I have a jersey and, like, everybody signed it around – and. A, girl, a bunch of girls just said, like, I'm so grateful for you teaching me the things that you did. Like, I look up to you, like, blah, blah, blah. It was just a really, like, good thing to hear um, from them, you know? And just, like, to have that. And, yeah, like, I told you this before, but give it, knowing that my jersey was going to be given to somebody else was really, really hard. And that's stupid because, like, it's a, it's a jersey. But I'm like, it was my jersey, yeah. you know? It was mine. But nobody going to be as good as Faith. <laughs> Whatever. I wasn't that good of an athlete. I was good, but I wasn't that good. Was it hard well, being, like, a student athlete? Was there, like, a lot of pressure on you? Oh, so much pressure from my coach and my mom. Like, I mean, I I, I had an injury one time with my knee. Uh, I was pinned. Two girls had me pinned in basketball. And they both let go, and I just went straight down on my right knee. And I was wearing a knee pad, but I went to the – to the trainer and she was like yeah if you weren't wearing your knee pad you would have shattered your kneecap but I was like oh that's great so I probably poor I, patella yeah I, I popped a, a <laughs> sack of fluid in my knee like a bursa sack or whatever and so Ugh. whenever I did that like it was okay while I was straight but anytime it bent it, yeah. it was like it's so painful so I was like it was oh, like coach- a lot of pressure yes and I was like oh coach put me in put me in like I, I can do this I can do this so he put me in. I couldn't even make it down the court. He's like, Faith, come on. Put me in, coach. <laughs> yeah. He's like, Faith, come on. Get out of here. And I'm like, I'm sorry, coach. I'm just trying. He's like, no, I appreciate you trying, but, like, get off the fucking court. Like, hello. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure with that. And then I started um, dual credit classes my junior year. And um, it was just so much between sports and, and like, yeah. doing those college courses was really hard. But I'm glad I did I it. I definitely it was really- feel like – dual credits or like not harder than like just your normal college classes but I feel like there's just it's more pressure because if you don't pass those then you didn't get like so like I took history and said I took dual credit history instead of like regular history Mm -hmm. and it was like if I don't pass the dual credit then like I don't have like a history credit for like my junior year so it was kind of like a lot of pressure on like oh shit I gotta pass and also it was like a couple hundred dollars sorry my 20% battery came on. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. That's why I stopped. And so it was just like, <sighs> it was just, I will say it was more harder than like college classes. You know, you I think? mean, I have a lot of experience with college, with, with college classes, but maybe it was just our like professor or whatever. Cause she was hard. She was stern, but she was, she, I think her name was Miss Kitty or something, but she was, she was, she was so passionate about like, history that it really yeah it resonated with like all of us and so I feel like it was easier to learn Mm -hmm. and but other than that like that was the only dual credit I took except for like AP art oh and I made like the perfect score on that but that was that was it I don't know what the fuck I took to be honest creativity I took a bunch of stuff I took like uh college algebra I took I can't remember I can't remember like, some kind of government class, and then, like, a psychology class. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, it was, like, I had, like, 24 hours of, of college classes when I graduated, so. Yeah, and I had, a, I had a crap ton of, like, scholarships and stuff, too, so. Well, since we're on this topic, we'll just jump into college. There you go. Um, I'll go first, since mine's relatively short. 
<laughs> work, <laughs> work. So, uh, my senior year, I was accepted into Lamar University uh, for their pre-nursing major program, like pre-nursing major, whatever you call it. And I went right after high school. So, like, I graduated that next semester. I went to Lamar. Right. And I had I had classes, like, every day except – no, I think I was Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. Mm. And it was, like, all day. I think I had, like, a gap in, like, the middle of the day. So I would just stay on campus and, like, study or whatever. Um, How many classes did you I am here to say college. Four? You were taking four? Yeah, either four or five. Okay. Because it might have been five because then with anatomy and physiology, you had, like, the lab. Oh, so okay. it was, like, on top on top of, like, that. Um, oh, no, Tuesday. Tuesdays I would have to go in for lab. So, like, I oh, the only okay. day I never went to college was Thursday. Yeah. Um, but I'm here to say college is not for everybody because I dropped Period. out. Period. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. I, I went for three semesters. And the first semester, I failed anatomy and physiology drastically. Like, I think it's I had a 30. Class. Like, it was class. so fucking hard. Yeah. Then my second semester, I took it. I failed by 0. 0.2 points. And after that, I think I was just, like, I think I'd just given up because, like, honestly, college just made me feel so stupid. Like, I felt, like, dumb. And I, was, I wasn't no. dumb. Like, I had, like, a four-point-something GPA in high school weighted on the weighted scale. I think unweighted, it was, like, 3.8 or whatever. Like, I graduated cum laude. Like, I was smart. Yeah. I was capable. But it just, like, college, like, physically drained me, emotionally drained me, and mm-hmm. it just, like, made me feel so stupid. So, that, like, third semester, I kind of just, like, I tried and tried and tried, and then it got to where I just like stopped. I stopped going. I stopped doing assignments. They put me on academic probation and was like, if you ever come back, you'll be on academic probation. I was like, I'm never coming back. So fuck off. Bye. Yeah. (laughs) But it was, it was so hard. And I think what made it worse is that like, I felt like I was like a failure, especially to like mom or something. And that was hard for me when like I told her I dropped out. I was just like so scared, like what she was going to say and she was fine with it, whatever, because I think it's because I didn't live with her, and I was, like, already living with Bradley, so it really wasn't a big deal, mm-hmm. because in Pebble's house, it was, you either go to the military or you go to college if you want to continue living there, so oh, since okay. I didn't live there, I don't think it mattered, and then mm-hmm. after that, last, I think it was last May, I graduated from a phlebotomy, like, course, and I got certified in phlebotomy, And that's, like, where I shined. Like, when I took the, like, national certification course, whatever, I finished it in, like, 30 minutes. The instructor was like, that is the fastest I've ever seen anybody finish it. And I made, like, almost perfect score. And he was, like, shook, bro. Oh, my God, you I didn't know this. That's so cool. And then, like, I went – this is what I did with my ex-best friend – you know, so, like, I had her to, like, kind of go off of, and I will say that, like, when we did, like, tests or something, if I, like, made higher than her, I would kind of have to, like, hold back my excitement, because, like, she would get, I don't want to say, like, get upset, but, like, you could tell that, like, it she was hard her. on herself, like, if she didn't do as good as, he's like, she didn't do as good as me, um, but, like, I was really proud of myself, and Bradley was really proud she of me, did. too, and I just, like, I'm so grateful that he allowed me to, like, do what I wanted and like kind of like supported go you. up and down with what I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah, and like he supported me definitely. He let me stick him, um, even though he absolutely hates like needles or anything. <laughs> I have a video of him like letting me take his blood. Do you really? <laughs> it's funny. But other than that, like I'm a college dropout, and it's okay if you are too. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't matter. Like I, I know a lot of people. I'm who doing. Don't have to go. Oh fuck me. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing pretty damn well. Bradley's doing pretty damn well, and, like, neither of us graduated college. Like, you don't have to go to college to be successful. No, you don't. Not at all. I mean, Bradley has a great job, and he's had it for, like, almost two years. Where's he at? Oh, he's on the couch. Anyway, uh, almost two years now, and it, it pays amazing for not not having a degree, and he loves it. So it's like, you know, you can... He didn't go to college? No. Well, he, he did take... Ah! 
Oh, God, I thought he was in college. He took, he took <laughs> classes at Tech, but then he, yeah, no, he's not going anymore. He stopped going. Baby, when did you stop going to college? Huh? When did you stop going to college? Yeah, in 2021, he stopped. Because he didn't know what... Hey, that's when I graduated high school. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know what he wanted to do and why spend money on a degree when you don't know. So, yeah, he's just working now. Yeah, that's... Yeah. He might go back. I don't know. Good it's for up him. To him. Yeah. Um, for me, yeah. I graduated and then I went to um, Blint, Blint and Brenham. And that was so yeah. hard. It was so hard because living by myself, I lived on this lady's ranch, like not her ranch, but like her property. And she had like horses and cows. Cute little cottage. Yeah. Like a one bedroom like house. And it had, I had like a back porch and I had like a laundry out there, like a washer and dryer. It was, it was so beautiful. Like if I could live somewhere, I wanted it to be exactly like that. Um, I would ride her horse for her, stuff like that. But that's where I met my really toxic friend, um, I don't want to name her on here. I was really sad. It was really hard to leave home. I was going back and forth for a bit. And, like, it was weird because everybody would be like, oh, Faith, you've changed, you've changed, you've changed. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm the same person. I don't yeah. I don't know. But I think that there is something that changes in you because you're not, you know, in the fucking small-ass town with one gas station and a fucking motel. Like there's yeah. the whole world yeah. is going round and round and round and they're not, you know? Um, and so then it, it just got to the point where me and me and D I'm just going to call her D me and D had a bunch of friends. Like we were friends with the guys on the baseball team. Like we were having a great time. It was fun. I got Panda. I got Panda on, I think it was like November maybe when I brought him oh, home. Oh, Panda Wanda. Yeah, when I brought him home. Come here, Bubbies. Come here. Come here. Come say, come say hi. Come say hi to the camera. Look, look. Oh, big boy. Yeah, it's my bubbies. <gasps> Hi, Panawana. Oh, my gosh. Do not rip my cord out. <laughs> this is a bad idea. <laughs> anyway, so that's when I got my dog, Panda. And, um, yeah, Dee just really fucked me over. She just really fucked me up mentally. And Fucking I, bitch. Yeah, she would go after my exes. She was talking to a bunch of guys that, you know, I used to talk to and stuff like that. And she would just call me, like... What a tramp. Well, yeah. And she also, like, one time she... I've already told you this, but I'm going to say it for the podcast. She she said, oh, Faith, like, if you got any work done, like, what would you get? And I said, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm not really into getting work done, but I would get, like, my lips done or something. And she was like, oh, I thought you were going to say your yeah. nose. And I was like, no. Why don't you fix your face, you ugly? <laughs> oh, God. That's Why don't you good. fix your fucking personality? Oh, and this is T, too. So when I first met her. That was a good one. So. Oh, good one. Work. Anyway, so when I first met her. She had this boyfriend, whatever. And mind you, like, I just met this girl because I sat by her in a classroom and then we just hit it off. Because she's a, she's a cool girl. So anyway, she had this boyfriend. Okay. And, you know, she was friends with these guys on the baseball team because she had known them from her hometown, whatever. And so tell me why one day this guy from the baseball team was telling me, oh, yeah, I was uh, running to the door buck, buck ass naked, like, blah, 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 trying to, trying to pull it open. Like, something, the door was broken. And... And D was there, and I was like, I didn't say anything, but as soon as we left, I said, D, did you fuck him? And she said, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you're fucking him, or did you break up with your boyfriend? And she said, no. And I was like, well, you need to break up with your boyfriend. You need to tell him. Yeah. I was pissed. Oh, I was pissed. I was like, no, I'm not going to be doing this. No, you need to tell them. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Huh. She didn't. And they both found out, and they both broke up with her. But then the one guy got back with her. Yeah, I was like, no, Ugh. I'm not okay with this. That's gross. Men. You're gross. Like, get the fuck out of here. Don't be a cheater. That's gross. We don't condone cheating in this friendship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I dated that one guy, and I found out that he was cheating on me because I smelled her on my hoodie. And she tried to lie about it. Oh, and she also tried to get me to go to his house. Or, like, not go to his house, but, like, meet up with her and, and pull up on him and burn his stuff. And I was like, girl, you're crazy. I'm just trying to get out of this. Yeah. Like, I'm the girl that he cheated on me with, yeah. you know? And I'm like, girl, you're crazy. Don't act like she didn't know. You know she fucking knew. Yeah, she knew who exactly whose hoodie that was. I know she does, for a fact. Yeah. She was a biatch. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway. She's ugly, too. Yeah. And then <laughs> I, well, and then I was in that really toxic relationship with that one guy. God, this video's long as shit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. 
Um, <laughs> I was in a really bad relationship with that one guy. But also, too, humble, uh, whoa, what? <laughs> College humbled me as well because I thought I was really smart, but I, I only got, like, one A and then, like, one B and then C's my first semester in college. It was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. I thought I was the dumbest person on the planet. But you're making it through, Miss yeah. Aggie Ring, 90 hours. Barely making so it. So proud of you. That doesn't mean I have a high GPA. That doesn't matter. Numbers don't mean anything. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> as long as I got this degree, bitch, and I can get out and get a job, I don't care. Put so much money yeah. into it. And then bug it. And then I moved to Blinn and Brian, and then that's where I met Rad. And then I transferred to A&M, finally. I applied, like, four times, and I got rejected each time until I finished that one chem class. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we weren't talking oh, yeah, when no. you transferred. No, no. I was, um, you know, I, was, I applied, like, four or five times, and they wouldn't give it to me until I finished my chemistry my chemistry class that I had to take I had to take chem too so once I finished that they they um allowed me to transfer and stuff um but yeah I mean yeah it's been good like I had a 4.0 one semester one semester other than that it has not been that high um then, okay though yeah and then um I was gonna say I worked a yearling horse sale through like lazy e ranch because of my one of my professors and that was a shit show. But that's another story for another day. We'll talk about that with animals. But yeah, I mean, that's it so far. And I'm still here. I'm still at a and And um, me and Rad have been living together for almost three years now. Like, we're we're just chilling. Yeah, ready to get this. Ready to get it done, though. I'm ready to be finished. Yeah. Graduate you have two, two semesters. Two semesters left? Two, baby. Two, yeah. Other than that, that was the second episode of the Golden Mouse Podcast. Welcome uh, to Lecture Halls. It was kind of chaotic, but, I mean, high school was very chaotic. Yeah, but, so I mean... it fits the theme. But while you're, t- while you're telling it, you're, you're recapping things that, that you have. Yeah, yeah, you're remembering, you're remembering things. Yeah, and I don't care. Like, who cares? It'll be fine. Yeah, this is a pod. This is us <laughs> talking. They're just... They're listening in to us. So, like, we're going to talk how we normally do. Fear. And make sure to come in. What, what times are we doing again? Friday two? at 4. Friday at 4 is when we're posting, baby. Every Friday. Friday, is- Friday at four. Get into it. Get into Tune it. Tune in. <laughs> yeah, and we will see y'all it. next Friday at four. Peace. Bye.